do uh, I've halfway through a workbook for this as well, so you can go through exercises and um, basically uncover what the best best method is for you, what times, because we we all have different rhythms in our body. So some people like to study early, some feel very uh, dynamic in the morning, and other people prefer to stay up late at night. And we've all got different circumstances. We've got children and, and, and different shifts and things we're working. So I'm going to talk in generalities. Um, I don't tend to, um, I, don't, I don't, don't like to offend people, but I, I generally do come to the point quite quickly, those people who know me, and some people take offense. But don't be offended by what I say. Just take take whatever works for you, and if something really wouldn't work for you in your circumstances, then disregard it. But I'd rather just throw everything in there, and then you, you pick out the bits that work for you. Now, and by the way, it's the first time I've, I've delivered this presentation, so um, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm going to do my best to stick to time, but we, we could run over, we could finish early. Um, and I'm going to hang around at the end if anyone wants to ask questions. But the, the main theme, if there's only one thing you take away from the next, um, the next 20, 30 minutes of presentation is consistency. It's, it's really important that you, you get into a rhythm. Because if you think about your day, about 90% of what we all do is, is done on autopilot. We don't think about it. So we, we, we get out of bed, we, we do the same thing, we'll brush our teeth, have a shower, go to the bathroom, um, we tend to put the same sock on the same foot first, um, eat the same cereals, get in the car at the same time, and we tend to do the same, the same thing. So what we're interested in doing is, is tricking ourselves into building study into our day so it actually doesn't feel like a chore. Because when I say to you, you know, you're going to have to do two hours a day if you want to pass any Cisco exam, you're going to have to do two hours a day for around um, 60 days. I mean, some people are quicker and some are longer. That's going to evoke some sort of response. You're going to think, oh, no, that sounds awful. You may get excited or it just may seem like a chore. But if it's actually built into your day, so if I said to you, you're going to spend 30 minutes a day, 45 minutes eating food, you think nothing of it because that's just become part of your routine. So this is what we're going to do. And part of building um, consistency is developing patterns. For want, of a, for want of a better word, they call it in our neurology. We're, we're building patterns into our mind and into our, into our um, routine so it becomes a habit. And some of the ways we do this is building study into the same times, the same place, the same duration. And we remove thinking out of the equation. So all of a sudden, or sorry, not all of a sudden, but over a period of days and weeks, it, it's just something that we do, um, and we're removing thinking out of the equation. And the best um, analogy is going to the gym. If you go to bed, and I've done this many times, go to bed, I set my alarm for the next morning at half five saying, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to the gym, and then during the evening I'll turn the alarm off, and I'll just sleep in, and I'll think, well, I'll do it another day. So it's because I'm having to think about it that... Um, this is where the problem comes in. All right, so uh, why do we do it? It takes, or experts say, it takes around two weeks to form a new habit. I've seen some questions here, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, so after around two, after around two weeks' time, you'll actually feel uncomfortable if you're not studying, and and the reason is it's in your neurology. I mean, would you ever dream of getting up in the morning uh, and going to work or carrying out your day without brushing your teeth? You could do it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't come to any harm, as long as you didn't get too close to other people, but it would feel uncomfortable. And this is what we want to, ha this is what we want to have happening now with regards to our study, it, it feels uncomfortable. And I'm going to do a, a presentation um, next week that's a whole bunch of psychology, and, and, uh, which is about motivation. So you're going to be in a position where you actually want to do it, uh, but that's for next week. So it's the same as going for the gym or, or dieting. If it becomes, studying becomes part of who you are rather than what you do. And that might sound a bit Tony Robbins, but it, it's just, I can't imagine not learning something new every day. I can't imagine not reading some books on business or marketing. I can't imagine not going onto the, the How to Network website and contributing on the forum. It doesn't, it just feels like it's something that, that I do do and I enjoy. And um, it should be the same for studying as well, and it will become that. Become that. Okay. 
I'm just, I'm just going to have a look at a question somebody's right here. Hardest part for me is remembering the commands to type per device. I'll come to that later if that's okay. So establish your study window. Work out what works for you. When I, when I first started, I left the police and I was uh, miles and miles away from home, from my family. Um, I, I decided I really needed to get through the exam. I was desperate to get through. So I decided to get up earlier every morning. I set the alarm and instead of getting up at half six or seven, I'd get up at half five. And I wouldn't do anything. I'd just grab a book off the, sh off the shelf. It was awful. It was a big CCNA book, which you've probably all heard of. And I read it and it was just like reading Latin. But I did it every morning anyway, and it just it just became what I did. And uh, think about when you're commuting as well. We're looking basically for I've put the bottom pockets and sessions. So a study session is obviously 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour. A pocket is just a, a little break. You could it could literally be one minute um, of you waiting somewhere. You most people have got these iPhones now. I don't have one. Uh, you can have a, a cram guide in your pocket folded up so if you're waiting for a bus and um, during your commute as well there's audio guides on the website and there's other companies doing audio stuff um, during lunch breaks as well I'm going to come to I'm going to come to lunch breaks and, and putting down some boundaries later because I found it it's bewildering that um, having left the police where you do get a break unless there's an emergency um, in IT, people seem to feel under pressure to work through it or just work through it and think nothing of it. So you've got to become what, what I refer to as proper selfish. And proper selfish is when you get on the um, when you get on an airplane and you have your children with you and they do the safety briefing and they say, if in the event of cabin depressurization, put your own mask on first, your own oxygen mask on first. And the reason they say this is because if you're fumbling trying to get your children's on their mask on, um, you'll pass out and you're all going to suffocate. So you've got to start putting yourself high up on your priorities. Um, so I'll come to lunch breaks anyway later. Late afternoon, um, something else I'll come to is if you're having problems getting focused going home. I, I used to stay home late when I worked at Cisco, my second job in IT. I had some tough exams to get through the CCMP exams there was at that time four exams and I basically stayed at work I I got to um, work on all the equipment that they had at work most people had gone home and I missed the rush hour as well so I wasn't sitting in the rush hour doing nothing and um, I got sort of good hour and a half worth of studying done and I used to read theory in the morning and do practicals in the afternoon because I was fresher in the morning Early evening's a good slot as well, and if you have children, late evening, you've just got to, um, it's something you've got to do, otherwise you're going to end up as one of these people who is studying for the CCNA over, well, years. I used to run the classes in, in the UK before, before I sold the company, and people, people came back to me three years later, and they're still studying. And it's just, it's shocking when, if you ever pull a plaster off, now you want to do it quick, otherwise you're going to yank it off and it's going to pull out one hair at a time. Uh, right, find out what works for you. So like I said, we're all different and we all have different rhythms, circadian rhythms that we work to. And um, you know, sometimes you'll be sharper and you'll know as well. You'll know when you're feeling better and when you're just feeling a little bit tired. And people take and look at your diet. I don't have time to go into it here, but make sure if you're studying, you must you must have a clean and healthy diet. And I, w I won't patronise people um, now by pointing out that the pizzas and the junk food. But if you're eating too many simple carbs like potato chips, and I'm not eating healthy food, you, your brain isn't going to work, and the information won't sink in. So at least for the period you're studying, um, you know, look after yourself and keep yourself healthy. But are you an early bird? Um, I've spent quite a while recently getting up at half five in the morning and doing some training because um, I look after our two-year-old in the morning. I sort her, sort her out and my wife looks after the twins. So the only time I get to train really is early. If I don't do it in that session, then I know it's unlikely I'm going to do training later in the day. Or do you prefer working in the night? If you've got family duties, it's, it's another strange thing. People, people say I can't do because I've got kids. And I think, well, that's we've all got we've all got kids, haven't we? We've all got children. Um, my 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 dad's terminally ill. Um, 
I've got a close family member who's very ill. You basically, you've just got to get past all that stuff and, and work out what you're studying in the first place. And I'll come to this more on the next webinar. But you've just got to get past that stuff and um, turn your um, turn your reasons into uh, turn your excuses into your reasons. All right, so um, family duties, what time can you commit to? If, if you can only commit to 45 minutes for an hour a day, just do that. That's better than nothing. I, I recommend two hours a day um, as, as a minimum. And which regular time slots? So look at your day, look at your diary, which we'll come to in a bit, and what can you definitely commit to? If, if your day is absolutely rammed from when you get up to when you finish for the day, then you you have to make time. You have to create the pockets of time, or you have to get up earlier. And if you're doing what I say uh, you should do, then um, you only need to do it for a few weeks. If you're going to drag it out, then you're going to be waking up early in the morning for the next year or two. How the hell do you get yourself up in the morning? I just struggle with it. I've tried sleeping earlier, but I'm still a drooling zombie in the morning. That's not me, by the way. I'm reading a question. Have you considered us with a attention de deficit disorder? That was only invented a few years ago. <laughs> All right. Um, making time. If you've got any excuses, by the way, put them on, on the question thing. I could do with a good laugh, and I'll beat you with my excuses. Making time, get up earlier. If you want, if you wanted to, put it this way: <clears throat> Monday morning. Uh, what time do people normally get up on a Monday morning? Anyone? I, I wake up at four four thirty in the morning. Okay, well that's that's the, you're already. I, I wake up. I wake up at p.m. six at six a.m. in the morning. Sorry, six a.m. Yeah, six a.m. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Monday, wake up at five. Five, okay. Monday morning, right? I'm going to ask you to wake up an hour earlier. And if you do, I'm going to pay you $10,000. Will you get up an hour yeah. earlier? <laughs> that is some motivation right there. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So the problem isn't getting up. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll try. <laughs> Don't send me a text an hour later and say, oh, I decided to have a lie in instead. So th this is going into what we're doing next week, but you've got to work out your reasons, you know. Uh, do, do, do you want to be where you are now in a year's time or a year or two years' time? I'll tell you, when I was studying for my Cisco uh, exams when I first started, I was absolutely desperate, desperate to, um, desperate to get through because it meant a better life for me and my family, and it, it meant a whole bunch of other stuff, which I won't go into here. So insist on your lunch breaks. Like I said, you've got to be properly selfish. Um, some people are pressured into working through lunch, that sort of thing. Well, that's your reason. That's your reason to, to get this qualification and do something. So if humanly possible, uh, go on your lunch break. Uh, um, study at work if you can. Some people have supportive bosses, some don't. And try and negotiate what you can. If you, I'm not, I don't encourage people to, to be sneaky. If you've been paid to be at work, then do then, then do work. That's the official line. Um, other people say if you can get away with doing some exams, then do it. But I mean, I, we're all grown up, so I'll leave that part to you. I've already mentioned staying late at work if there's no distractions where you are. If you stay late late at work and people are distracting you with work and projects, then um, what I tended to do was find another office. I found a quiet office somewhere and I did some studying. Uh, and if if I couldn't. Um, if I couldn't do that, then I'd sit in my car at lunchtime. I'd put some uh, classical music on, and I would sit in my car and study in the car park. Anything just not to be interrupted. And it's only temporary. I do tend to repeat myself, but this is only for a few weeks, remember, if you're doing it properly. Got another question. Uh, what did I do first? I'm trying to remember what I did first. I did an A+, plus PC assembly, then a Network+. Plus. And then I did a, the CCNA, the Cisco CCNA, and then I was doing some Microsoft exams. But um, I, uh, I went for a job with Cisco, so I started studying Cisco again. Because Cisco guys tend to get paid about 40% more than Microsoft. No offense to the Microsoft guys. Mm -hmm. Sitting in a car is one of the most peaceful times you'll get, in my opinion. Push that one. That's Michael, I think. Yeah. Can we all sit in your car with you? How many seats have you got? We could have a little study group. 
I amuse myself. Uh, prime study time, I really like early in the morning. Get a, you can get a good hour in if you get up early hour. Uh, Lunch time, again, I've mentioned. After work, if you're driving, turn off your Bon Jovi and whatever else you listen to and uh, get some audio guides going. I've got the... I, um, I don't want to make this into a sales pitch or anything, but I've recorded the entire CCNA book in audio. So you get to listen to me every day if you have that. Uh, I don't want to be crass either, but toilet breaks. Um, this will probably appeal to the gentleman more because we really treasure our, our toilet time. Um, take your cram guide with you. I've got a, a brand new subnetting application that works on your iPhone. That's completely free. You can download that from the iStore. TV time. Um, would you be prepared to sacrifice some TV times? The, the Nielsen ratings are the little boxes that attach to some of the TVs in the USA. The average American spends five hours a day watching TV. Um, in the UK, it's probably the same. So, you know, t I must admit, telly, I don't know about the USA, but it's pretty bad. Our telly tonight, in, Friday night in the UK, is absolutely awful. If you've got some of your favorite TV shows, um, record them. I think nearly everyone's got all these recording devices now that can record stuff and watch it later. And I'll come to that point in a bit as well. If anyone's got any questions as we go along, by the way, if you're still still awake, set boundaries for yourself. Um, refuse overtime. The worst type of overtime is uh, when you don't get paid. I used to hate work, <laughs> working that overtime. There's other overtime where some of us uh, on the call, we do get offered and paid. But just look at the long-term benefits. So you get you get a few dollars in the short term, but you're sacrificing a lot more money when you get Cisco qualified in the, in the long term. Insist on your lunch breaks. Um, I'll come to this other one in a bit. Um, I, I, well, if I've got a, bit, a project done, I won't do any DIY, I won't do any gardening, and I won't do any housework. Now, I'm not saying neglect your role as a parent, and I'm not saying don't feed your children for six weeks. You've obviously got to get a balance, but um, you've got to um, set down some boundaries and get agreement with your partner and agreement with your children, which again, I'll come to in a couple of slides time, of why you're doing this. And I've already been on call as well. I've been on some contracts where I was on call and it was awful. So see if you can uh, negotiate that. And this is a, a really big thing as well, is if you're, if you're in a relationship and you have children, you've got to, you've got to get so some I sort of get What was the meaning of your DIY? Pardon? DIY, uh, do it yourself. It's household um, yeah. painting and decorating okay. and drilling holes and that sort of stuff. Uh, whose agreement? Who do you need to get to buy in? Um, very important, uh, wife, husband, partner, and discuss with them why you're doing it and what what's happening in the future. Because I, the only reason I run How to Network is because I know and I've seen that people, when they pass the exam, it makes a difference to their um, employability, how much they can charge where they are, or going out contracting it. And it did it for me. It got me out of a job I hated and and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, speak to your boss if possible. Um, you might want to keep it quiet if it's if you're going to pass and then leave. So that one's down to you really. But um, if you could explain, you could even say to your boss, I'm taking an exam. You don't have to tell him what it's in. And um, you know, I'm going to need to finish on time for a few weeks. Uh, other people, and I don't recommend this, um, they say they've got an ill relative they have to care for. I mean, I have no conscience, so I'd be happy to say say that to my boss, but it's down to you. There's another question come in. Can I expand upon how I break down material and how long you should study in any given topic before moving on? I'm going to come to a study technique that will hopefully help answer that question in a bit. If not, I'm going to hang around at the end of the call anyway. Um, so, colleagues, friends, family, and children, and I'm going to come to this again, actually, because I some of the stuff. Uh, delegate. As a business owner, I learned to love delegating. The picture there on the right is a, an artist's representation of my garden when I'm busy on a project. Basically, you can find lost, um, lost Amazonian tribes at the bottom of it. The grass is so long. Um, gardening, I get people, hand, handymen or whatever, to come around and do the gardening. The uh, DIY, the tasks around the house. If any doors are, le are squeaking or pipes are leaking, I get somebody else to do it because that stuff will just eat up your day and it'll just it'll just chew away your time when you could be doing something productive. 
um, my wife understands as well I don't do any decorating when we've got projects on and um, school runs again is another one it's down to you to, to negotiate uh, temporarily if you use up all your brownie points I don't know if that makes sense in the USA if you use up all of your um, goodwill points with your partner make sure that there's a, there's a payoff like maybe weekends or, or some other way that you just do something to to make life a bit easier for them uh, washing up again so if you're doing any of the above if I followed you for a day would um, would I get the impression that you're somebody who's serious about passing an exam or would I get the impression that you're somebody who isn't studying for anything at all and uh, only you can answer that by the way and uh, negotiate so if there's anything needs doing or anything that's taking up your time see if you can get other people to do it call in some favors bribe uh, children again children um, the most is there, if there's any parents on the line can anyone tell me what children want most from us it's not sweet time time that's the one so uh, what I find works well is if your child's at an age where they can understand is explain to them you know mommy or daddy is is doing something really important um, when we pass um, it's gonna it's gonna make a difference and we're gonna have a, a, a treat a family treat um, and we're basically I'm gonna come to this again I'll, I'll do I'll come into a lot again in a moment but our, our, our children often understand more than we give them credit for and um, I'll talk in a moment about being in the room so if you explain to your child that you can't play play with them for a couple of hours study like a lunatic for those two hours then leave your study in and go and spend your time with your family and I'm going through this now with my two-year-old she wants to play with me and um, but I always make time every day from four o'clock till five I'll take my daughter out and we'll go and play in the park uh, ask your wife or partner to help the other thing is if you're calling in these favors and if you're saying to family and friends that you've got something important you want to do you're going to lose all your credibility if they walk into your office and find you surfing on Facebook or um, playing a computer game I think that's enough said on that uh, learn to say no now I love saying no because I don't um, I don't experience any guilt whatsoever maybe it's the 12 years I worked in the police but if I say no or refuse to do something that feels right then I'll sleep like a baby at night but some people feel guilty I don't have time to go into personality types but uh, some people are um, what's known as servers they like to serve other people my mother-in-law is like this if you ever go to her house or she even if she comes to our house she'll always want to make you a, a cup of tea she'll always want to do things for you um, and about around 25 percent of the people that are on the call at the moment will be uh, a server that, that they want to help other people that's that's what gives them meaning and that's great but the problem is um, we need to be a little bit ruthless someone got some music on we need to be a bit ruthless with ourselves and with other people just for a while so if your boss says can you work late tonight unfortunately for the next few weeks the answer is no the wife or husband can you mow the lawn no <laughs> friend uh, again friends God bless them they often want things from us just for a while we have to put our boundaries down and say no you're gonna have to find somebody else <laughs> uh, I'm just I think someone I can hear someone typing out a question here you kind of get that time is very difficult <laughs> to be in no you know two four month old babies that need a lot of parent time yeah absolutely I've got to oh, well, I've got twins as well and a two-year-old um, and a wife and all that sort of stuff I don't know what to say we're all grown-ups we have to get a balance but you know you're all on this call for a reason <laughs> you're all on this call for a reason because you want to achieve something and as they said in the uh, that series of fame I nearly put a video on the presentation you know fame costs and here's where you start paying so if you struggle saying no really good book which I've read and I recommend called boundaries uh, Henry Cloud and uh, John Townsend it's about boundaries at work with friends and family and in relationships and, and, and with our children as well feeling good about saying no 
All right, these, so these are the top distractions. And by the way, you know, I'm not impervious to all this stuff as well. I was preparing this presentation early this week, and for some reason I found myself gravitating towards the forum, checking Facebook, um, just checking my emails, just silly things that I, that I know I shouldn't be doing. But it was a good lesson for me putting this presentation together because um, your emails and your, your Facebook and all that stuff, the internet isn't going anywhere as far as I know. It's all going to be there after we've done our, our study in time. But um, what I find is people develop patterns. They, they kind of complain to me that they want to sleep, but, but, they keep, but they keep surfing the internet. And I find that quite a strange comment to make. They know what they should be doing. They know what's stopping them, but they carry on doing it. It's like every time I poke myself in the eye, it really hurts, but I can't stop myself. Uh, and someone is at, someone's asked a question about children. So we all know this as parents. If we say, you know, make sure you eat your vegetables, they'll look at what's on our plate. And if we're not eating our vegetables, guess what? So our children, our children, just think about what... Um, you know what example we're giving our children they learn by watching and what we do not what we say so we have to actually go through this ourselves while we're studying it's delayed gratification we know we're going to get a reward we know we have to work for it and it's going to require some self-discipline but like I said when you get through this qualification if you take your IT career forward as a Cisco engineer and, and possibly moving into contracting you could be making quite quickly 25 percent more than what you're making now so, you know, is, is it worth this, putting the work in now to get that reward later? Is it worth the self-discipline? Okay, and involve our children as well. If, if they're old enough to understand, get them to buy in. My friend had a, a big project to do with his business, and he, he's got three adopted children and two natural children. He basically didn't he was told he couldn't have any so he adopted and then by some miracle you know, he had two of his own with his wife but he had a big project and he said to his children this is, this is what uh, I'm doing I'm going to be working long hours you still will see me but not as much but in two months time if I can achieve this thing we're all going to go to Disneyland and instead of his children complaining that they never saw him they actually grabbed him and pushed him into his office every day and told him to get to work so they could all go to Disneyland so get them to buy in um, we've got a little star chart in our bathroom we're trying to potty train our two-year-old and every time she sits on the potty we give her a star so the children can do that with you as well I'll we'll just have a sip of water and the other thing is be in the room what I mean by that what I mean by that is you're either studying or you're with your children, but not both. Um, I, I, I've been a little bit flexible with this since I sold my last company. But basically, if, if you're going to study, be somewhere away from your family, away from your distractions, and don't have your children coming in and interrupting you. And by the same token, don't be in the room with your family uh, with a child on one lap and a, a Cisco book on the other. Just don't mix them up. That's coming back to boundaries again. Uh, can you clean the house? No. Oh, Chris is on the call. All right. So proper studying. These. Uh, um, by the way, I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but it's just uh, I'm verbalising the stuff we all know we we should be doing. I like somewhere quiet. Um, if you can have music on if that works for you. I sometimes have some classical music on. Um, always close the door if you're at home. Um, my, my family know if the door's closed not to interrupt me because I'm doing something important. If it's something unimportant, then I'll open the door again. But for you, um, I'd argue that studying is really important. This is a crippler, internet. It's about, if, if you've got a book in front of you, if you're studying from a book, don't have the internet next to you. Now, if you have to research something that's relevant to the book, I'll come to how you do that or how I suggest. Turn your phone off and stay away from the telly. You should just have your books and um, your, your, your Cisco switches and routers or your simulators. 
and people have, for some daft reason, they they become distracted. They want to know the, the second an email arrives, so they have uh, audible notifications. I've turned off all my email. Now, it could be different if you're at work, but if you're at home, uh, you don't, unless you're on call to be a hostage negotiator or something like that, you shouldn't really need to be sitting by your email and have your phone on all the time. Um, some people call them blackberries, I call them crackberries. I go for a coffee with a friend and they're talking away to me but at the same time looking at their, their blackberries. I think he's knocking a microphone. I'll turn the audio off if it carries on. Um, I've got a do not enter sign for my door as well. So if you want, I'm just going to mute everyone. Yeah, I think. I oh, know it's gone. <laughs> Try, trying to find the mute button. Ah, okay, I think I've muted everyone now. Mute all. Consider yourself all muted. I'll turn it back off in a bit. You can type a question if you've got anything to ask. Uh, okay, so do not enter sign on your door. So if you're researching something, uh, and I've had to teach myself this, if you're researching some technical thing and you're a little bit stuck, I don't recommend searching on the internet then and then, I don't, then and there. I don't recommend going onto the forum and posting. The reason is that's step one of going on the web. And what will happen is while you're on the forum, you'll see somebody's posted a question which you want to answer, or you'll see someone sent you a message, and before you know it, 20 minutes of quality study time's gone out the window. So note it down and um, post it later. All right, so post-study review. At the end of every study session, and I've, I've got another point on this in a few slides' time, look at, did you, be honest with yourself and ask yourself, did you get a quality study session in? Did something distract you? Uh, did you distract yourself? Um, is it a particular person that's interrupting you or a particular system like an email or your iPhones or whatever? And the Japanese have a phrase called Kaizen, which basically means continually improvement. This is how they became um, the world leaders in car manufacturer. Uh, but to cut a long story short, they basically, instead of making one big massive change, they made hundreds if not thousands of small little adjustments to the way they did everything from car design to manufacturer. The, um, the whole system became almost perfect. So keep doing little improvements and keep asking yourself after every session, did this work for me, what did work, what didn't work and what can I improve? And here's the study rules. They say when you're training in the gym, you never go into the gym without knowing what you're going to do. And I, I go to a, a gym not far away to do lots of boxing training and grappling and I hear the guys in the changing room getting ready to train and they change and they say to their friend, what should we do today? Shall we train our arms? Shall we train our legs? And that just sounds ridiculous to me because if you're going to be sweating under a lot of weight, you should know what you what weights you're going to use, what you trained last time so you can do more reps, do a heavier weight, and you could, should monitor your progress. And you should be doing the same thing with your studying. There's a free six, uh, CCN8 uh, in 60 days plan. We're going to be doing more 60-day plans on the site. But you should know every day what you're supposed to be studying, when you're going to study it, how long for, uh, will it be an exam, an audio, a cram, subnetting, will you be doing IP, uh, OSPF, something like that. So make sure you've got that set every day in your diary. Um, and somebody asked a question earlier about um, how do they get, how do they remember stuff. I don't, I, I concentrate on the work rather than the result. So if I know I'm going to study access list for 50 minutes, I'll study access list for 50 minutes. Some of it may have sank in, some of it may not. That isn't the point. The point is I've sat down for 50 minutes and done quality study time on the subject that I planned. And you'll obviously, because you're going through a timetable if you're on the 60-day program, you're going to go back, you're going to do a lab on that, you're going to do an exam, you're going to do the flash study cards, and it's going to keep reinforcing itself. And there's some posts on the forum about something called the Pomodoro technique. I don't know much about that, but it's, it's about studying in chunks. 
and um, something I read which works really well and has worked for me when I, I did a, a part-time law degree when I was in the police I did promotion exams when I was in the police and then I've done lots and lots of IT exams I was studying chunks and it's a 50 10 50 uh, system 15 minutes of studying and I'll, I'll show you how you can um, put that time in um, so you, you get a warning when your 50 minutes are done 50 minutes of quality study time with no emails or internet or phone calls or any breaks you have 10 minutes break and then another 50 minute session ideally so this is um you've got almost two hours quality study time in there and we all need rewards we all need little treats we're not much different to children really so in that 10 minutes time I'll go and make myself a cup of coffee I'll go to the bathroom uh, I can even watch a, something I've recorded on telly for a few minutes anything just to have a break and then back in for the 50 minutes um, so you're either studying or you're not studying you're not sort of trying to do two things at the same time and the same men can't multitask anyway Oh, speaking of uh, multitasks, the golden rule. So focus on one task or subject or that alone. So in, in your study period, I don't recommend you try and do a lab on frame relay and, and then um, a do theory on something completely unrelated. Just focus on one particular technology or one particular subject and then um, move on. Move on to something else um, for the next study period. All right, so here's this, uh, I talked earlier about planning your sessions and, and knowing what you're doing in advance. So this was my study session for an example time and day on the 20th of September, and I like to put ticks. It's, it, it looks silly sometimes, but on the fridge in my uh, kitchen, I tick off when I've done a workout, and I'll tick off when I've got a project done, and I'm always monitoring and checking things because I own I'm running three businesses the how to networks just one of one of my businesses so I have to be quite brutal uh, with my time and myself so I ticked off I did a NAT um, this is my 50 minute session I did NAT for 30 minutes theory I did a NAT lab for 20 minutes and then I had 10 minutes rest I just got out of the office I didn't surf the net or anything I, I got some fresh air then I came back I did my subnetting review in a 10 minute block um, I tend really subnetting because it's such a mind scrambler I just tend to do it in small chunks and then I did some IP version 6 theory and then I tried some commands ticked all of those off got two good 50 minute sessions in as a reward I watched a DVD it might only be 30 minutes but I like I've, I'm a member of a member of a DVD club in the UK and uh, what I'll tend to do is watch little blocks of a DVD throughout the day or some in the evening But you know, when you've got to the end of this day, you can relax, do stuff with your family, whatever you want to do, go out with friends, because you've got two quality study sessions in there. Another big thing is I find people don't take responsibility for their study periods. So rather than say, um, I wanted to study, but I'll let, I'll let myself get interrupted, what they'll say is, I was... I wanted to study but my kids interrupted me I wanted to study but um, someone kept emailing me that doesn't that's illogical to me um, what they should have said is I wanted to study but I let the following things get in my way internet wife inter wife or husband uh, asking me to do stuff checking emails ask yourself how do you prevent this happening next time and for every problem there's a solution if the phone keeps ringing it's pretty obvious isn't it what we need to do unless like I said unless we're on call or it's something urgent um, you know it should really be turned off or onto voicemail all my phone calls go through to Skype so if anyone wants to know anything they'll leave a voice message on Skype and I've got an answer service as well you can get an answer service in America for you know absolute next to nothing like ten twenty dollars a month depending on where you go uh, wife keeps interrupting me. I hate to pick on wives actually. I should have maybe put some husbands in there as well. I feel a bit guilty now. But wife keeps interrupting me. Put a keep out sign or um, or study at work. I was going to put get or get another wife, but uh, I I keep surfing the uh, web. It's so tempting. I think the web's more addictive than crack cocaine sometimes. Uh, keep surfing the web. Study away from your laptop. I'm going to show you a, um, a firewall application in a in a moment that you can then. Um, 
stop yourself surfing the web if you if your will is that weak. I keep leaving the office and going out for snacks, and again, I'm tempted. I like to go out for cups of tea and coffee and stretch my legs or whatever. So use the 50-10-50 technique, and there's a website called Egg Timer, e.ggtimer.com. And get in page by work, negotiate some help at work, take some holiday, or if you have to, I've left jobs before because they've just been um, taking up too much time, um, and I'm not getting anywhere. All right. So what are we? We're 35 minutes into it, or just over. Tools to um, help you claim back your study time. Here's a few things I found while uh, these came recommended actually from a book I've read called The Four Hour Work Week, which is probably one of the best books I've ever read. But that's a story for another day. RescueTime.com. Um, I think there's a there's a light version or a, a free version you can use or maybe there's a 30 day trial, but have a look at that. You can focus on what you're gonna do, and what it does, it sits in the background on your desktop and watches you like a hawk. It's like Big Brother watching you, and it will tell you. You, you could have thought that you've sat there and, 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 and worked on a lab for an hour, but when you look at the graph, it's actually told you you've spent 10 minutes on Facebook and five minutes checking your Hotmail, and it, and it might have only felt like an, an instant to you. So that's something cool that you could try out. Uh, the URL e.ggtimer.com. That's basically just an online stopwatch. You can time it for minutes or hours or as long as you want, and it will sit there and do a countdown. So if you're going to do the chunk studying in 50 minutes blocks, 50, 10, 50, it could be handy if you struggle for the 50 minutes, or it could be handy if you would rather take a, a 50 minute break and do a 10 minute study period. Now I've tried that and it doesn't work. All right, uh, Leech Block. Um, that's a Firefox plugin, and it's uh, like a mini firewall. And you can basically, if you if you can't help yourself for whatever reason, um, go to various websites. It will block them for you. And you, the only I think the only way to actually turn it off is to reboot your your PC. Um, MacFreedom.com, I think that does actually work on um, works on PCs as well. It used to just work on Macs. This actually uh, dis disables you going out to the web, as far as I know. I won't be mixing the tools up. Yeah, it disables your PCs networking for up to eight hours, and you have to reboot your um, your PC to get out as well. So it's a handy little tool. I mean, all, all of my business is on the web, and so I'm, I'm generally using it quite a lot. But for studying. It could be something that um, you know could be useful for you. Okay, I did uh, tip one earlier. Tip number two: book the exam. I'm like a stuck record with my students, and I tell them what to do, and they don't do it. Uh, and obviously, you know, people people join the site and they listen to me for a reason. I guess I must. I'm not an expert in everything, but some things some things I do know, and have helped. Well, I don't know how many people have helped through their Cisco exams now. I've trained over 3,000 people in courses and on, online, and I've helped many, many hundreds pass their exam. But one thing I can tell you, those who pass booked the exam. They put a date out in the future, and then they work towards that. If somebody tells me I'll book the exam when I feel ready, that's it's um, it's a paradox. It doesn't work that way. It's like if you any of you who got married... You can say to your partner, yeah, we're getting married, but until you've gone down to the church or the registry office and booked that date, as far as they're concerned, you're not getting married. And the minute you have that date in your diary, all of a sudden you have to take action. You have to um, book the flowers, the photographer, the food, the catering, the honeymoon and everything. And it's the same with your exam. Your brain, your mind is a goal-seeking organism. And without something to focus on, it will just waft off into into heaven knows where. I don't know where most people go off to. So no exam day. You've got nothing to lose. You, you haven't sacrificed any money. You haven't put your money where your mouth is. I mean, I had 67 people um, say they were coming on this conference, and 29 have turned up. Um, do you know what I mean? It's so easy for somebody to say, yeah, I'm going to do it. But when it comes to it, I find, um, I find around 1 in 20 say, um, do what they say they will. That's my experience so far. So we've got um, 
you know, under half of the people who said they were going to come. And this is, you know, this is the stuff that's going to help them get through the exam. I found myself rescheduling, rescheduling the exam date when I scheduled in advance. Any suggestions? I don't reschedule it. Um, schedule it for when you know, you know, if you do the study in, for example, 30 days or 60 days away, schedule it and, um, you know, take it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's like saying, you know, I set my alarm to get up in the morning, but every every night I I turn my alarm off. What can I do? Hmm. Let me think. What could you do? Uh, yeah. Okay. I flogged that flogged that dead horse now. What's next? I listened to a motivational speaker actually from America um, quite a while ago, and I was listening to an audio thing, and he says if you if you want to be successful, you've got to be a cannibal. And I thought he meant eating people until I actually worked out after some while of him saying you have to be a cannibal. He was actually saying accountable, but in American. So you have to be accountable. There's more questions coming in here. I came to the webinar. Can I get a copy of the first hour? If you're a Platinum member, this has all been recorded for you and uh, will be downloadable. And I'm doing a workbook as well. Okay, so be accountable. And you know, most people, they hire personal trainers, and the personal trainer gets them to do exactly what they could have done for themselves for free in the gym or even at home. They could have done some press-ups. They could have uh, gone for a jog. They could have done some sit-ups and all this sort of stuff. But they've paid a personal trainer $30, $50, whatever. And, and the, reason it, the reason is um, they know the personal trainer will hold them accountable and they know if they book a session and don't turn up or cancel at the last minute they have to pay um, and yes I've got I've got one as well I've, I've got a trainer for boxing and uh, grappling and um, I've even paid someone to look at my um, my diet my eating and as I wrote down what I was going to send them I thought I know exactly what they're going to tell me they're telling me I'm eating too many carbs um, eating too late into the evening and I'm leaving it four hours or five hours between meals I know exactly what they're going to tell me, but you hire them because um, you know you're going to be held accountable for your actions. So be accountable to your family. Tell them what you're doing and why you're doing it, and then they're going to look at you and, and, and think, well, you know, do I have a winner in my household, or I'll never call anyone a loser. Do I have a winner or a non-winner? <laughs> a post on the forum, we had a guy, um, Al, say he was just sick and tired of not getting anywhere, he's getting angry with his other people, getting angry with himself. So he's posted on the forum on the 7th of September to say, this is it now, I'm going to do it. And he's doing a daily study diary. The forum on how to network is a friendly place. I've, I've, made, I've, I've kicked people off the site and I, I don't want their money if they've been rude or unfriendly. We're all here to support each other and help each other through. And whatever you're going through, there's I guarantee there's 50 other people going through it. So post on the forum, and we'll we'll help you any way we can. Uh, I don't recommend posting on the free forums out on the internet because generally they're full of very bitter people who, to be honest, don't want you to pass and be successful. Uh, or start a blog. You know, free blogging software on WordPress. Do your journey to CCNA blog, and put down what you're doing every day and what you're struggling with. The Japanese have a phrase, it's uh, four down seven times, stand up eight. So don't expect you to book 60 days worth of studying and study for 60 days. You're going to not study for a day, you're going to be ill or, or just fall off the wagon. Uh, just get back up and reset your clock and, and start again. There's some other questions coming in. What's the typical time to prepare for this CCMP switch and route exam? I'm not sure how long it should take. I, I did it. I did them a month each, but you might want to schedule them for two months per exam. <coughs> Excuse me. So be a cannibal. Oh, we're almost at the end here. And like I said before, this is only for a few weeks. This isn't for the rest of your life. Now you could go on and do other exams if you want to, but just just focus on the next exam you have to do. Forget about all the others and focus on that one task. Uh, for me, uh, passing the Cisco exams meant I made more money in another job. I made around 20% more money. It meant I could afford to move back home with my family because I was living away. It meant I actually saved in dollars around $400 to $500 a month 
in uh, rental charges because I didn't have to rent a room. It just meant freedom. And uh, I'm not going to talk about values here today, but passing that exam meant freedom to me. Uh, it meant I could do a job I really enjoyed, uh, and then eventually I went contracting and made a lot of money, a lot of money contracting. Um, and then I eventually started my own business. So get clear on what it is you want. Um, I'm not bothered about flash things with money. I want quality of life. So money, money gives me quality of life and um, to do lots of fun stuff with my family and my children. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, I guess I'll uh, take any questions or comments. We've been going ar around 50 minutes now. What I'm going to try and do now is unmute everyone and you can either type a question or um, or ask one. How how can you overcome how can you overcome posting the exam date? I'm not sure what that means. So just let me find the uh, unmute everyone. I think you meant postponing, mate. Postponing. Okay. I think you already answered that. Oh, there it is. I hope I have. <laughs> got some really noisy hands. Wow. Have anyone got anything they wanted to ask? Yeah, there is. Wow. I, mean, I think somebody left the mic on and it's just too much noise coming from that end. I wish I knew who uh, uh, Charles got got a little thing here that tells me who's making noise. I can send an electric shock down the internet. <laughs> I set it to stun to start and then set it to Ken afterwards. Oh wow. I'm only allowed to unmute so many people at a time. Are you not getting the name of the person who is from where the noise is coming from? Well, at the moment it's showing you. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you know, why not type a question and I'll, um, yeah, I think. there's always one, there's always one training their dogs or teaching their parrots to sing. Questions. Let me look at the question. But how can you come postponing um, the exam? Bloody hell. That's not a question. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate you, man. Oh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to I think you can one. shut down. You can uh, mute it. Yeah, <laughs> I've just muted you. So maybe you can type a question. Wait a minute. I like this. Who's this? The, 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 I like this person. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciated your webinar. Your site is great. Thank you for your time. Back to studying for me. I like you. Who's that? Scott Elmer. Uh, what Cisco track do you think will be the most popular and sought after for security or written and switching? I recommend you do what you enjoy and don't do what I used to do, which is go for whatever pays the most. My, I've written an article. It's on the home page this week. I recommend everyone does the CCNA, then the CCMP, and then specializes. The reason is you will always find work uh, with the core skills that most pretty much every company needs. And the voice won't work if the network isn't working, and um, neither will the security. In fact, you don't need don't need any if the network isn't working. That's my personal recommendation. Obviously, if you feel you want to specialise early for whatever reason, um, you know that's your decision. Uh, oh, it says here you can raise your hand. Somebody's pointed that out, so you can raise a hand if you have a question. I'll get used to this software, sorry, the question box is so small I can't actually read it very well. I've set my exam date for July and I keep moving because I'm not finished studying yet. Um, I recommend using the 60 day program if you're not on that already. If not, if you can afford to, not everyone can, I recommend doing as much studying as you can and then taking the exam, especially if you can get work to um, work to pay. Chris P, CCSP, you're biased. Uh, is the testing form similar for is the testing format similar for the CCNA and CCMP? Yeah, Cisco have got an exam simulation on their on their website. If you go to cisco.com forward slash CCNA or CCMP. How many books do I need to read before taking the CCNA? 
Well, that's easy, just my book. I have to admit, I've been doing one of your mock tests. I use my AHD to my benefit. Oh, someone's doing a test when they're listening to my webinar. What did I say about multitasking? Any women can do that. At my boss, my company and my boss looked at me like a question mark and said, what will you do with routers? You set them up and leave them alone. <laughs> and I didn't know what to respond. Um, is he the IT manager? If he is, he needs sack him. Paul Kev here, can you drag the drag out the question box and click where it says the questions and drag them out? Hey! Kev, if there was a CCMP in question CCNA in question boxes, you'd pass. That's impressive. And I get back to studying. For the CCMP labs, they can all be done on my live rack. Yeah, I've got a CCMP rack. Laugh out loud, Aladdin. I have my uses, Kevin. That's that's questionable, Kev. Uh, any other questions? If anyone wants to actually ask a question, if you type out your name and I can unmute you. <clears throat> You've still got 28 on the call. So maybe someone's asking for a good question to be asked. That's what my manager thinks. He says that a secretary can do what we do. That's why I want to leave. I don't blame you. That's why I left my last con contract. I was, my boss gave me his notes and said type them up for the morning. How do you overcome interruptions? Well, I was just going to say that until you interrupted me. Depends what they are. Uh, I mean, I've kind of covered most of that in the in the call, but you either have to remove the interruption or remove yourself from the interruption. And I know people are going to come back and say, yeah, but I've got children and I've got this. You have to you have to find something that, that's going to work. I recently went, just for fun, I went to a Learn Chinese um, course. It was over the course of, I think, a couple of weeks, and it was every day for an hour. And this one lady there, she's uh, a foster mom. She's got about six or seven children. She starts at about half five in the morning with the children, because she has some very young ones, and she finishes with the oldest one at nine o'clock at night. And then at nine o'clock at night, she took them all in. She then got out her books and she studied for a law degree and she passed the law degree. Um, and she got up, um, I think, at three in the morning. So she did a little bit of studying, went to bed quite early, got up very early in the morning, did another two hours studying, and eventually got through a law degree. So, you know, like I said, it comes back to the $10,000 question. If I give you $10,000 to overcome your interruptions, you'd do it. So just ask yourself. Um, what you would do to overcome it because when you get through the exam I guarantee you know if you if you take it forward and, and do the uh, jobs get promotions and work for the companies and go contracting it, it will be worth a lot more than ten thousand dollars I know many people are earning that in a month or uh, or less than a month but that's on the um, that's on the next website on how to contract dot net uh, sorry, there's some more questions coming up here. Uh, overcome interruptions. I've not seen very many Cisco jobs. Where do you recommend looking? Uh, we're kind of going into the break into IT stuff, really. I've got a lecture, a lecture on. I think I posted it on YouTube actually. So um, I'm, I'm not going to answer that one at the moment. Paul, I'm making a bold statement. Once I pass my CCNA, I'm going to become your first millionaire. It's I always say to people, it's my goal. It's my goal to make just one person a millionaire, um, and I'll be happy, especially if it's me. Um, what type of job should I seek now that I'm a CCNA certification? Uh, we're going like into the break into IT stuff rather than studying. You basically a Cisco networking role. Look for Cisco network support somewhere. Property millionaire, that's you, Chris. You've been on the course. You might as well make some use out of that. I've just joined your break. How to break into IT site? Everyone should check it out. Very informative. Who's this? I like you, John. Oh, sorry, it's such a small box. Cosoletti. Uh, forgive me if that isn't. Um, the way you pronounce it. Yeah, I'm after this call. No pressure, guys, by the way. I'm closing down the um, break into IT site for joiners because we're starting 
uh, I'm going to start coaching people from Monday. Uh, if anyone wants to ask any more questions, just type them in. I'm just going to have a look to see if anyone's got their hand up. Sheldon? Do you want me to unmute you? Let me. Sheldon, yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Go to your questions pane. Yeah, Sheldon. Hello, Paul, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 far away. Okay, very good. I have a question that goes back, I guess it's more to the study model. You spoke briefly on the 50-10-50 model. Uh, using your example of studying NAT for 30 minutes and then moving on to static NAT lab for 20 minutes, one of the biggest things I struggle with is perhaps not getting the content down to a level I would desire. Um, and I, I find that I'm continually circling back to the same subject material before I move on. I'm curious as to what you feel the best approach is. Perhaps let it lay and, and move forward on to something else and come back to it later or continue to circle back around to the same subject. I, I recommend focusing on the task and then um, what I find is people, they never feel like they know it well enough. And what we, what a lot of people tend to struggle with is how, how to learn stuff. They don't understand their learning method. So I recommend uh, to answer your question, you go through that study session, you do the theory, you do a lab, and you focus on the actual study period rather than how much you do or don't know, um, because your your brain will actually take more on board than you realize. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of the kinesthesio kin kinesthesiology. We, we learn visually. We can learn auditorily with someone telling us. So we can learn by reading, somebody telling us, or... Um, kinesthetically which is by actually doing it and that's when you do a hands-on lab and the kind of the best way to learn is the best way um, that sinks in for you but also a combination so if you're going through the 60-day program um, it tackles all of those three learning methods and then if you're if you do go through the cram guide as well and the audio cram guide which I think is free on the site somewhere um, it will sink in so don't get to an end of a um, don't get to the end of a period and kind of kick yourself for not uh, remembering it. Just congratulate yourself for getting through that period and then and then move on to the next subject because um, you're going to be tackling all of these things in in different ways. You've got the the flash the flash study cards as well, which I really do rate as a learning method. And then the thing that brings it all together at the end is doing the practice exams because it isn't until you're asked a question that your brain access the neurology the little the little box in your brain where you read that paragraph so that's a long answer did, did that kind of answer your question at all it did indeed yeah appreciate the feedback thank you cool okay does anyone else want to put I've, i think i've worked out how this how this works now al i'm going to unmute you and uh, i can actually see <coughs> you've asked a question there Mm. Uh, oh, go to questions pane. Okay, can you hear me, Al? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. You got cool. a question? Yeah, I was uh, basically around studying the. Um, I start to use like a method where I study the theory first, stay away from my PC to uh, stop the temptation of. Um, it's not so much going on Facebook and stuff like that, but going too deep into a subject, and I end up spending two or three times as long as I should do on the subject. Yeah. Um, going too deep, so I need to know how to stop myself from doing it and how much is enough kind of thing. Just focus on the, the allocated time. So if it's a 30-minute study session, just focus on the time. When it's finished, even if you're only halfway through, I'd, I'd come away from that session because IT people are generally detail people. And what happens with detail people is they will say to themselves, I never know enough. And I've done a lot of business with detail people, and they're, they're, it's good in a way, but they get paralyzed. They can't make a decision because they feel like if it comes to a sales presentation, they feel they never know enough to do that presentation. So I've seen people post them on the forum, and they're asking what the voltage is on the fourth wire in on the Ethernet cable. And I just <laughs> think, oh, man, that guy's lost in IT, you know. We, we've probably lost him for good, to be honest, because he's just gone too far down that rabbit hole. So, yeah. like I said to Sheldon, just focus on that study period. You're going to review it later anyway. You're going to be doing a lab on the stuff. You're going to be doing a flashcard. You're going to be looking in the cram guide. 
Um, yeah, so it, it does, you've got to um, transfer this stuff from short term memory into medium sort of long term. And this is why yeah. we do why we do the labs, do the crams, and then we do reviews as well. But, you know, it's only an exam. There isn't a guy. There isn't a guy sitting in the reception with a gun, waiting there to shoot you in the head if you don't pass. Uh, and I see a lot of people. Maybe become, there should be. Maybe there should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can arrange that. <laughs> I know someone will learn kneecap you if you want. But you know, you've got nothing to lose. It's like I failed my first driving test. So what? I'm trying to remember if I failed any. I think I failed one of the Microsoft exams at some point. I can't remember now. No one even knows. Because I went, oh, I failed the CCNA first time. And then I went for an interview with Cisco. And they said, um, did you pass first time? I said, of course I did. And then they says, what did you get? And I said, oh, 995. You know, and I think I just scraped through or something. You know, that's the joke, isn't it? What do they call the guy who came um, bottom in the class of doctors? Hello. Doctor. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay, Fair any enough. other questions, Al? Uh, not for the moment, no. All right, consider yourself muted. Anyone else with their hand up? Oh, Julius, let me just look at your question. Can I book the exam online without going to an exam centre? Yeah, you book it online. Um, can anyone type out the um, URL? It used to be the number two and then test.com. Um, chat. Well, there's a chat line here as well. I've learned something today. Right, I'll go see if anyone else has got their hand up. You can book it online. Yeah, if you go to the Cisco website, cisco.com forward slash ccna, if that's the exam, and it'll tell you how to um, book it. Uh, anyone else got their hand raised? Myrtle Francis, let me have a look at your question. Hello from Myrtle. Let me unmute you. Oh, Merle. Sorry, is it Merle? Merle, can you hear me? Hello? No, you've gone. Uh, you've gone inactive. Oh well. Anyone else want to ask anything? Anyone? Anyone? Hands raised. All right, so, oh, no, there's some more. Mel? No, I can't hear you. Let me see. Seb, let me look at your question. Late for session, please summarize methodology, re-effective study approach. No, can't do that. Uh, it's going to be on the website, the whole thing. It'll be a bit hard to summarise the last hour. Julius, you've got your hand up still. Let me have a look. I've answered that question, hopefully. If you've got another question, then... Um... Oh, I found a button that puts everyone's hands down. Any last questions? I've just got one more thing to say before we finish, and then um, I'll certainly be going to bed. The rest of you, I guess, you'll be going home or doing whatever you do on a Friday night. It'll be studying, of course. Where's Kev? Is he still on the call? There he is. Maybe we should all shout at Kev for the next 20, 30 minutes. Chris, let me see your question. 5.30 a.m. for me. You there, Chris? Hi, mate. You're right. Yeah, you? Yeah, not too bad. Sorry. You in Starbucks? <laughs> no, not yet, mate. <laughs> Sorry, I only just realised how this bloody thing works. I just noticed. Join the club. I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be hosting it. I've just. I've just realised you can drag the question. I've looked at this question. It's like two millimetres tall. I'm trying to read it, and then Kev. Kev's right. He does have his uses, despite what everyone else says. Just one of them needs to be passing Cisco exams. 
Yeah. Did you have a question, Chris? Because uh, I think you're pretty clued up on the studying side of things, I'd imagine. I'm just wondering if Kev's booked his exam yet. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I'll put, I'll put Kev on, and if he has, I'm going to pay him a thousand pound. Let me just, down. I'll just get his, I've got a thousand pound for Kev here. Kev? Kevin? Don't pretend you can't hear me. Wait, has he disappeared? Jay? J, the K comes after J. He's gone. Oh, no, wait. Here he is, Kevin. Kevin. He's hiding under his desk. <laughs> <laughs> He's took the Fifth Amendment. You're not in America. That doesn't work in the UK, Kev. Oh, well. 10,000. Uh, was it a thousand pounds I was going to give him? I'll keep that in the bank. Um, Earl Basker, how do you decide what to study, routing or LAN? Uh, use a 60-day 60 60 day guide and a 60-day study plan. Has anyone used that, by the way? Uh, Julius, hi, Paul, I'm here. My mic ain't working. Lucky for you. All right. I, what, I'll take one last question if anyone's got one that's to do with what I was talking about rather than anything else. Uh, Seb? No? Or you wanted me to summarize everything? All right. So um, thank you very much for listening and um, bearing with me when I tried to get everything worked out. I'm running another webinar next week at the same time. I should get the time right, hopefully. It's going to be 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I believe it's called Eastern Standard Time. I need to check on the thing now, but it'll be the same time for you. In the UK, it'll be 10 in the evening, and it's going to be on motivation. It's going to be, I wouldn't say a Tony Robbins thing, but we're going to explore um, what's going to make you feel passionate about studying, what's going to get you fired up, I'm feeling enthusiastic and if you can tap into what does that for you then you can apply the same kind of methodology to anything at all in your life I uh, I sat down with this uh, it's not really a life coach but he, he is a coach he's a fantastic guy and we looked at my values years ago when I was struggling with my first company really going through a hard time and I looked at my values and once I worked out my highest value in life which is freedom it really it was like dynamite and everything fell into place <clears throat> which is why I studying was absolutely no problem to me even though I found it hard sitting down there and reading them books and doing them labs is absolutely no problem because those exams to me meant freedom and freedom to me is more important than oxygen so you know this is why years later 10 years into my IT career this is why I've you know, got the contract in, made the money, um, built the IT training business, uh, sold that, running how to network, that's going great, running other things, I just feel really passionate. So we're going to get to what is going to make you feel passionate, get you fired up. Um, I'm going to have a co-host on the call, we'll get Kevin on there to learn all his secrets. He's still there, look, but he hasn't, he hasn't asked any questions. Um, maybe we'll get Chris P on there as well to work out what's making him so enthusiastic. And, um, you know, hopefully you learn some cool stuff. I'm going to record it again and stick it on the Platinum page. So um, this is Paul Browning signing off. And have a great evening, everyone. And thank you very much for listening. And God bless.